Chris Lovell with uh, head coach Chip Darden of the Lovett Cooper Pirates. Welcome back to another edition of uh, Pirate Talk. And uh, coach, we'll get into a lot of things, uh, you know, today about, uh, you know, the game last week, the game coming up this week and all that stuff. I, I wanted to, to mention, though, over 6,000, I think, views of the game on the YouTube channel. So if you're wanting to watch his his guys' football games or anything out there, man, the LCISD YouTube channel, man, that's that's where you go. You can also hear them on 100.7 The Score. But uh, big game, a huge environment. Take me through the atmosphere first uh, that you had versus friendship and all that. We'll get into the game here in a little bit. But I thought Cooper put its best foot forward. Yeah, that was that was unreal. And, our you know, our guys, we talked about it all week, that it's something that – um, you know, when I don't know, when you're done playing, you, there's certain things you remember about a game and maybe winning and losing a little bit, but just kept telling them, take it in. When you run out of that tunnel, take a deep breath, look at the crowd, uh, because it was a pretty awesome atmosphere. I mean, people lining the fences and all that stuff. And it's just, I think that game right there is great for West Texas. It's great for high school sports. It, it to me, is uh, right now the purest form of, of uh, amateur athletics. And, and I think that was a fun to be a part of. And obviously we wanted it to, to go the other way, but it was still a fun experience for everybody. You can follow his program on Twitter uh, at football LCP and obviously the athletics Twitter account at athletics LCP. So I want to make sure we got that in there too. Uh, on the road this week, we'll get to that in a little bit with uh, Abilene Wiley's non-district play uh, continues. But um, as somebody, I heard one somebody say one time about football, it's a game of random and unfortunate events. And, and yeah. like, and and I heard you say to your guys the other day, you know, the 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 equation. I want you know, yeah. like the how you respond to things. It's like, okay, here's what happens. Here's how you respond, and then that's ultimately what you know what. But football's funny, and yeah. you guys played a really good game, but it just did, didn't come out your way. I mean, take, let's just start yeah. here. And take yeah, yeah. That equation you're talking about, it's it's a it's been out there for a while, and I'm not really sure who. Uh, kind of started it, but um, I've read a few books that they talk about this, but it's E plus R equals O, the, the event plus the response equals the outcome. And um, that's one thing looking on film, there were a few areas, you know, I think we could pick every position group, every every player and say, hey, we could have done better at this, could have done better at that. But collectively, we didn't think we responded to some things well, whether it be a call that went against us, um, friendship just making a play, you know, being in the right place and their kid made the play, we didn't didn't think we responded as a group very well. So that's been a focus this week. Um, and then the second focus has been playing hard. And we, you know, we play hard. That's something that we pride ourselves in. But looking at the tape, we, we thought friendship maybe played a little bit harder. Again, individuals are playing really hard, but collectively as a group. And so th those are two focuses. And I, and I think the thing with both of them is they're controllable. You know, it's not, not something that is out of our um, control that, you know, there's just nothing you can do about it. We can We can play as hard, you know, full speed and um, we can work on responding. We talked about responding as a skill. You can get better at it. You can you can work on it. And I think uh, that's something that hopefully that we've done a little bit better at this week. And just kind of also with that, we uh, one of our focuses last week was perspective. You know, that, that it's a huge game. It's going to be f fun. Put it all into perspective and, and enjoy the moment. Enjoy what you're doing. And, you know, it, it's easy to have a good perspective, a good outlook when you win. Sometimes it's a little harder when you lose. And so, um, you know, there was a there was an accident that happened in front of Laura Bush on Wednesday that, uh, you know, and, and I know I'm bringing it down a little bit, but where, you know, a young kid and, and mom aren't around anymore. There was uh, Dalhart on Thursday night, one of my best friends, coaches up there in Dalhart, and um, they had an incident where uh, one of their players passed away. And, you know, I think, it's real easy to have a good perspective and outlook on it, but you, you got to have that perspective even after a loss too. You know, it, it's a game we're going to try to win, and we were upset that we didn't win against Friendship, but at the same time, we're trying to teach life lessons and response is a, a really good life lesson. We got to learn how to deal with adversity, whether we created it or we didn't create it. We got to learn how to deal with it. So hopefully, our guys will, and I think we're gonna we're gonna learn and as a group respond a lot better this week. The first thing I, I thought of whenever I heard you give that equation to your team was that I think tennis players use the they, they call it ear. It's and I had to write it down because I couldn't remember the mm -hmm. words, but it was it's expect, accept, and reset. You have to expect something bad is going to happen. Sport yeah. the sport is hard. Yours in particular. There's too many moving parts. Things are bad are going to happen. This is a fact. So expect it and then reset and then accept that yeah. the, you know. And so, uh, but I think do, do you. 
Do you become a uh, better coach after a loss? Or maybe I, I probably phrased that wrong. Is it easier to coach after a loss because you know you've got their attention? I mean, does that... Yeah, yeah, yeah I think a little bit. Um, and, and I think, I mean, uh, today we had somebody speaking to the team and asked who made a mistake on Friday. And I'm, I was the first to raise my hand. You know, we, we make mistakes too. And I think that's... Um, that's something as coaches you got to look in the mirror. You know, you preach to the kids being about the process and being about sticking with the process and what you do. It's the same as a coach. You know, you can't can't reinvent everything and think everything that we're doing is wrong just based on one one week and and one team of friendship deserved to win the game. I mean, that that's all there is to it. And they made more plays than we did. Um, tip your cap, but you stick with the process of what you're doing and, and believe in what you're doing. Yeah, I think, uh, let's see here. I, I think I wrote this down right. Yeah, the total yards in that game, 395 to 394. <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, pr- pretty close. Yep. Uh, you, you, had, you guys had nearly 300 yards rushing. If I tell you that you have nearly 300 yards rushing before the game, you probably think, Man, I, I I like my chances. Yeah, I think I think I would say that we won the game. You know, and that that's what's uh, crazy. And I think this again is sports in general. But um, the momentum swings in a game like that. You know, we we take a, a two two score lead in the fourth quarter. Twenty six fourteen. And you you feel really good about that. But we don't convert to two point conversion. Um, again, one I would like to have back on what we called. We we might should have gone to something else, obviously. But um, it felt like we lost all momentum that we had at that point. And uh, d- just crazy that, that we've, you know, and again, we've got to respond better. We've got to be able to, because we turned around right off of that and had a really big three and out on, you know, they scored and then we, we had a three and out that was just kind of a killer three and out. So didn't think we responded to a lot of that very well, but uh, that's just, that's sports, man, the, the ups and downs and um, how momentum can shift in a heartbeat. And that's just kind of how it was Friday. Nothing better in sports, you know. Yeah, that. No, yeah. Yeah. you and I are big fans. I of agree. It. Um, Tyler Sproul, uh, I thought, you know, wanted to highlight kind of what he did. Uh, the first drive, I mean, he kind of makes that that cut back, and then that 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 long run. I think he had basically about a hundred yards rushing on the night. But mm-hmm. kind of take me through his game. Basically. Yeah, that, that's what Tyler can give us. I mean, you you saw that. I think it was the third offensive snap of the game, where um, kind of a cloudy read on his pass, and he's able to tuck the ball, and then. You know, we're kind of somebody on the headset up in the box. Is, hey, get down, get out of bounds, and then he makes a little cut and he's gone. Um, and then made a great play on our our scoring drive. We, we scored with about three and a half minutes left to take the lead. Um, made a great play on a third and long where he kind of scrambles out of the pocket and then hits somebody downfield. Jackson Austin able to able to advance that drive, which we ultimately scored on. So um, he does a lot of that, and I think he, you know, you're just seeing him gain confidence every week. You know, we we've. Uh, We've always known he's a he, he's a playmaker, and that's what he does. And I think he's gaining confidence himself. And really, really fun to see a kid like that. That man, I've known him since he was. I remember him him and his brothers coming to basketball camp when they were this tall and they're competing <laughs> against each other. So fun to see someone like that have have some success. Yeah, his parents are good people. Um, and and I thought it was interesting because this is really is this the first time you've kind of used Jackson in that role and the kind of a running back kind of a. Yep. Almost, it looked like Eric Metcalf. I'm going yeah. way back, back there, like kind of just this Swiss Army knife. Like, where, where else can we put him? Yep, Jackson has, has done a good job, and we felt like we could get him involved a little bit more. So, yeah, this was the first week that we've done that. And still like our running backs. You know, he's not a full-time running back. He's playing a little bit of everything. But he's, he's the type of kid that needs the ball in his hands. He's he's part time at a lot of things. He is, but he's yeah he's needed. It but he's a, a full time football player. Yeah, there you, you that. go. That's yeah. right. That's right. Uh, I would be remiss if I did. It's nice to have a field goal kicker that that makes the the makeable field goals for you guys. And I think on one of those, the hold was a bit tricky. Yep. And yet, you know, right through and, and no drama there. But uh, Cub Patton with two really nice field goals that you you needed every point in this game. We did. And then and he had a punt that was down inside. The, I can't remember if it was inside the five. I know it was inside the ten yard line that made made friendship go a long way. So the Cubs. Super talented, and uh, I, I think he's kind of scratching the surface on what he's going to be. I mean, y- you forget that he's a sophomore, and uh, kind of yeah. his first real varsity games right now. So. Yeah, I mean, in front of a packed house because yeah. that's a lot of pressure on a kicker. But the the, uh, the two young men we sat here and talked about here are both sophomores, right? Yeah, yeah, which has got to make you. And yeah. Jackson was the holder on those on those kicks. So and that, that, that was, was nice. that that was big. Your your defense, it's no secret, you lost a lot from last year. Uh, and those guys, there were some guys that 
their record will never be broken on how many high school football games sure. that they played. But when you see a game, you know, where there's 35 combined points scored in the second half, or actually in the fourth quarter, this is a different group. They're learning. They're having to learn. And you've got really good football players over there at like Cutter and Ty and Brady and Cohen Peepcorn and on and on it goes. But this is – Coach Lightman's group will get it. This is just oh, yeah. the start. Yeah, they'll get it figured out. But this was just a good quarterback in tune with a really good receiver and, you know, kind of take me through that, that yeah, part. Yeah, and, and I thought Friendship had a great game plan. You know, they, they uh, have not run the ball hardly at all. And they, they kind of used uh, – Receiver number six, who we knew was going to be a good player, they Cousin. they used him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. One and six family, and the, used him as uh, putting him in motion and kind of used him as a back, um, a primary back, and that was a, a good scheme. And um, yeah, again, you look at the film, and I think we did some really good things, but then there's some some small things that we think are very fixable um, that that would have helped us win the game the other night. But we needed the, that situation. Um, We've mentioned that I don't know that experience is just totally a problem on on either side of the ball, but there are a lot of guys that maybe were on varsity but didn't play mm -hmm. this number of snaps or this these significant snaps. You know, a lot of times they were in at the end of the game or, or whatever the case might be, and now they're playing the high pressure snaps. And the only way you get better at that is to be in those situations. And so I think if we're in that situation Friday night, you're going to see a better a better response out of us. Uh, I think we're going to be more prepared for a close game and a, a high pressure situation. And we've mentioned some of these guys, but weekly awards went to Jackson Austin for his work on offense, Cutter Douglas for defense, and the Cub Patton for special teams. Yeah. Take me through the scout team awards that you guys give out because these are the guys grinding away, giving you guys good looks in practice, making sure that your guys – get good practice reps and all those things and it's nice to see you highlighting some of those guys yeah and we do it a couple different ways um one our, our jv kids they give us a look a few times throughout the week um and so on friday mornings we will honor a couple jv kids and it, a little bit of how they play on thursday is part of it um not necessarily who throws the most touchdown passes or anything but just they played hard they our core values, they, they kind of uh, showed those and, and played with those, but then also gave a good look in the week. And then on Tuesdays, we have a good on good day where we, our varsity guys, give a give a look, and um, it matters. We, we've got to see that varsity speed before we get to Friday night. So we try to try to honor that, make sure that they're playing hard. And, um, you know, this week was pretty easy with Wiley because a lot of the stuff they're doing, we do. So we're able to just run our stuff. and. Um, you know, guys that are getting reps there, they're getting better at what we do. So um, couldn't do it without scout teams. We, we have to have a look every week to be pre prepped for Friday. I want to mention Caden Chambers also. He went yes. over 100 yards rushing. Caden had a really good yeah. game. And, and we challenged him after Dumas a little bit and kind of – and I thought he responded great. And he, he did. He played well, got in the end zone once. That was a tough run when he got in the end zone, a, a very impressive run. And Caden's, Caden's you know, for two years uh, – kind of sneaky how good he is like sometimes the spotlight hadn't been on him but man he just finds a way to get it done and all of a sudden a, a play that looks like nothing is a nine yard gain and he just he understands it and just it, it, he's he's becoming a leader and fun kid to be around do, do some of those kids understand like the that position and how good it's been over the last three to six years do they have a a feel for that, and there's there's a standard playing yeah, that position. Okay. I think so. Okay. I think they do, and they still uh, there's there's little things that have carried over. The they okay. they break it out. We'll give a little Arby's plug here, but <laughs> they break it out every week to you know one two three Arby's, and then four five six. We got the meats, and you know it's it's pretty good. Um, but like that, Ar that was like a, Arby's the commercial yeah, folks. Yeah, for that you was see a uh, <laughs> that goes back to I can't remember. It was like Tyler Hairston and Nehemiah and Isaiah okay. and all of them. Yeah. So yeah, they're they're carrying on some traditions and they know now I think sometimes you know kids they put pressure on themselves and shoot we're gonna I think they also like playing in our offense because we're gonna run the ball and they're gonna have opportunities to carry the football you know there's a lot right now these days that running backs you're just a pass pro guy and might catch a ball or two we're gonna we're gonna hand it to them so I think it's a fun offense to play in if you're a running back yeah kind of spread run type scenarios yeah, yeah I, I like it I like it um, okay, some uh, let's do some let's do some listener questions here, okay. just kind of for, for fun here. Other than Dwight Yoakam, who do you listen to? <laughs> oh man, there, there's a, I, my genre is pretty broad, um, but the greatest band of all time is Led Zeppelin. That like that that's not debatable. Y'all 
I don't even want to hear it next week about the Beatles or anybody. It's Led <laughs> Zeppelin. That's the greatest band of all time. So I, let, I put a lot of Led Zeppelin on the playlist. Speaking of playlists, I have uh, been out there enough through spring and even in August and everything, and you, you'll get over there and get the music going. I hear everything from George Strait to 80s music to Biggie Smalls to yep. everything in between. I mean, it is a wide array, and I, I, mean, I love it. I never know what's coming next. Yeah. It's, uh, who, you, do you put those together, or does, so, does anybody uh, else have any input? Do you like I, coaches? I, I, or? I typically will put... One, like our morning practice I'll do, and then afternoon I'll let a kid play play theirs. This year it's been Top Elite that'll play his. Okay. But uh, a random one today that was on the playlist was Dr. Hook. If anybody, if you've never heard Dr. Hook, you need to you need to look up Dr. Hook. Got some jams. Okay. All right. The kids don't like Dr. Hook, I'll just tell you that. But <laughs> coaches do. I was, I was next to your office the other morning, and uh, I think that we were about to do something, and they're – out of the varsity locker room, I think Holton Hendricks was apparently in charge. This is what I was told, but Quiet Riot was going oh, on. There you go, man. I, I'm, I'm like, how do these kids even know yeah. who that is? But that, that's that's big time 80 stuff. Okay, so anyway, yeah. They, all hey, the sadly, place. they feel like that is ang- ancient, like uh, way old. It kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> but but it still doesn't change. I bet, you, I bet you had some washed jeans and Absolutely. Re- that, Absolutely. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that stuff. Uh, we were just talking about some of that. You mentioned one of them. He had a, he had a, some good playing time here in, in Lubbock at Texas Tech on Saturday. How much do you talk to former players? You mentioned Nehemiah Martinez, but yeah. you know you've got Kyler Jordan, Kobe McKenzie, and Jacob Polite and Judge Thomason. I mean, uh, there's yeah. the ten or twelve of them. But do you talk to those guys at yeah, all? Yeah, we. I try to. You know, it's it's tough. I think on both ends. But oh yeah, that, those college football players. That's a Full time deal, so there's not much time. So it's high but, school football. Yeah, yeah, it is. I mean, it's a, yeah. You better love this stuff. Yeah, but we. I try to. I try to text them every now and then, and I know uh, other coaches are as well. Some of their individual coaches, and they're you know m- most of the time it's uh, they're just trying to keep their head above water and get to the next game and next rep. And but they're doing well. It's it's fun to see those guys. Not no surprise on our end, like the success that those guys are having. But we knew they would, and but it's just fun to see. It's fun to turn on the TV and now you can watch every stinking game that's out there so it's so fun to either whether it's streaming or on you know on ABC it's fun to watch those guys yeah you're you guys are no secret to meet with college coaches over on your campus I mean you've had a lot of good 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 players other than Texas Tech which I, mean, I know you're a fan of the Red Raiders and uh, who, any other college teams that you really like particularly pay attention to whether you're just a fan of the way they are coached or play or schematically that you kind of go I think I learned stuff from watching this team. Is there anybody out there like that? Yeah, I, I don't really have like a second a second one. Um, when Auburn really got started with doing the stuff Gus with Malzahn, Malzahn yes. uh, that really intriguing to me and I think really good stuff because um, I think it looks real complex, but it's not. And that's the that's the secret to it. Um, also, uh, Ohio State. Now, I know he didn't have success when he went to be the head coach at Texas, but uh, Herman, when he was at Ohio State, I think I read somewhere – their national championship year, they ran inside zone like 312 times on the year. Like, you know, it it looks so so complex, but actually it's not. So those offenses really intrigue me, and those teams do too. But no, nah, man, I'm a Red Raider, 100. There, there you go. There you go. Um, let's talk about uh, let's talk about Abilene Wiley a little bit. Okay. Uh, another road trip. So this is the second road trip. Uh, uh, you know, early on in the season. Take me through, you know, because you guys have played them recently before, so you kind of know what you're getting to, kind of. But take me through, you know, the, the Bulldogs. If you yeah, will. you know, Wiley, I feel like, is on the trajectory that that we were. They're about five years behind us on the on the timing of it. And so, as far as growth goes correct. and everything, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and just kind of the situation. It's it's booming on the south side of Abilene, and, and just, you know, you got Jim Ned, which is kind of like the new home, and, you know, just, just very similar stuff. Um, and so that, they had a tough time, I think, originally on the bump up. You know, their first year in 5A, I think they went 0-10. Um, gave us fits. Uh, came to our place on senior night and almost beat us on that 0-10 year. But um, you just see the improvement every year and that they've, they've figured out. They, they kind of figured out the growth and how to handle all that. Their coaching staff is really good. Um, it's got a mix of guys that have been there for a long time. Coach Martin has been – he was a defensive coordinator for a long time under the – uh, Hugh Sandifer, who the stadium's named after, you know, just a Hall of Famer. 
Um, but then they've got new guys too. Their, their defense coordinator was a college, a Division One. I. I think he was at South Florida. Um, so you, you can kind of see the the new stuff that they're putting in, but then also some of that old traditional stuff that they have. Um, respect their program a ton, and I think this year what you're seeing them put it all together. They're really good. Um, they handled a you know Monterey thirty to nothing last week. That was that was a really impressive performance, and then beat a good Brownwood team. Watching Brownwood on film, they they have some really good players, and they beat them on their field. So two road trips for them. It's it's their home opener. I think they're going to be excited, and I'm expecting a, a home atmosphere kind of like we had last week. It'll be they'll be in a frenzy. They'll be they'll be ready to play. And honestly, we uh, they you know last year I think final score. I don't know if you have that written anywhere, but it was. Ended up a few score win for us, but it was a battle, and we, we kind of big played them, and otherwise they were hitting us right in the mouth. And so we know that there's there's a challenge there. They're going to be they're going to be excited to play us, but I, I think our guys are ready to get back out there. I can tell you that. And that's why so many people they they love basketball or baseball more than football at times because you could just there's another game you could just get get that. But but football, yeah. well, you sit around stewing it for yeah, a whole week. Do. That's just that's the sport. Yeah. And you 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 can't wait to get back out there. But it's like okay, no, you, you you're gonna have to cool off and then ramp it back up, and it's a whole week at a time, which yeah. kind of makes it miserable sometimes yeah. too. Um, but yeah, so so Abilene Wiley's five A Division two, mm-hmm. and um, but you're right. I think it's a, it's a good program and all that. Really good quarterback too. Uh, yeah. KJ Long, number seven, uh, he, he's he's a really good quarterback. He's got good, good running backs. I mean, some, the personnel is certainly going to be there to test uh, you guys on both sides of the yeah. Board. And they, you know, that talk kind of going back to what we're talking about with some colleges and simple simple stuff. They in the past few years they've done a whole lot on offense. Like you have to prep for every blocking scheme, everything. This year we're seeing a lot less, and and I think it's made them very successful. They're uh, moving the ball well. They're playing with tempo. They're, I mean, I. We had some coaches that were at their Monterey game that was on a Thursday night, and uh, they said that's the fastest they've ever seen anybody snap the ball. So um, we've we've been prepping for that. We're ready for it. But, uh, yeah, anyway, I, it, it's really – I don't know. As a coach, I like seeing when other coaches adapt. They've been doing something for a long time, but they felt like they needed to tweak something, and it, it's been really successful for them. Okay, last question. We'll let you get out of here, and we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, off the grid here. If you had a final exam you had to take – and you I had don't to have, take it. And okay, I'm pr- sick. That's perfect. You <laughs> had to pick one of your coaches to take it for you. Who would it be? What's the subject? <laughs> I didn't know. No, I gotta know the subject without, without knowing the subject. If it's a final exam in Clint White. Okay. All right. Yeah, probably any subject. It's probably Clint White. Clint. Clint. <laughs> he's is, your phone a friend guy, yeah, like the, the old his, game show. Yeah. He is. Uh, he's so far over my head that it's not even funny. That's good. See, that's yeah. that's a good shout out to, to Coach White out there. Yeah, yeah I pr- appreciate you. See, you're, you're the phone of friends. So stay by your phone. Hey, everybody else, you were a close second. second. <laughs> close. That's, right. that's right. Well, thank you guys for for, for watching this. All, all of the, you, the the folks that are on the, the YouTube channel watching this stuff and listening and watching the games and, and, and these podcasts and things like that. I certainly appreciate Coach Darden doing it. If you have input for, for me or for these podcasts, email us. If you've got questions for Coach, you can email me at C-Level at LCISD. Dot net again follow his uh team on at football at lcp and then at athletics lcp i think i got all that right but uh, anyway and i got one yeah. more okay thing. there you That's go right. bring it on absolutely the, I, I know that uh human nature is man everybody shows up to a big game we lose might not show up again i Heck, my son a couple years ago was rooting for Coronado after Coronado beat us, so I, I get it. But hope everybody will come out. The atmosphere Friday was unreal. Uh, next week we got a big one against Ryder for homecoming, and then turn around two weeks later and got Coronado. So our home schedule is in district is unbelievable. Tascosa will come to town in late October. They're currently ranked second in the state, I believe, 5A Division One. So. Great home schedule. Hope everybody will come out, and we're gonna we're gonna try to win the next one at home. And we hope to see a lot of you in Abilene on Friday night as well. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to uh, uh, that one against uh, Wichita Falls Rider next week. But coach, appreciate the time, and we'll do this again next week. Thank you for listening and watching.